to catch such a thief proved elementary. We only had to act as though we believed in such stories and pose as buyers. The thief then came to us. Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to render your digital human shader character in Omniverse. If you haven't already, please remember to check out our Getting Started tutorials for Omniverse if you're unfamiliar with it. We will also show some tips for lighting and material adjustments, and you can check out that specific tutorial for more information on that as well. Let's start off by exporting our character from iClone in USD format. To do this, we can simply use the USD export icon in the toolbar. Since this character includes subsurface scattering in the shader, please remember to choose the RTX path trace mode when exporting. We also don't need to include the IBL in this case, so we can deselect that. For more on exporting specifically, please check out that tutorial linked in the description. Alright, in Omniverse, the first thing we want to do is take a look at the lighting. Before we do though, we need to go up to Preferences and under USD Scale, enable the blend shapes in order to get the facial animation for our character. We've already set up some of the lighting in our scene, and to complement it, I'm going to simply click and drag in this background from the Content tab to Stage. The reason for this is because light bouncing in Omniverse is fairly accurate, and we're going to use the background object to bounce light off of. To demonstrate, I can go into the Backdrop Materials and change the color. Once I do, you'll notice significantly different lighting due to the color and brightness changes. An IBL map alone can make a decent lighting environment in Omniverse, However, in this case I'm using the lights to demonstrate the effect that each one has. As you can see, we're using four lights in this case to simulate light transmission on the skin. I'll activate them one by one so you can see the effect. The front one gives us soft ambient light evenly on the face. The top one is a bit harsher and is used to create the specular highlights on the hair. The red rim light is coming from behind the character to create the subsurface scattering effect that you can see on her right ear. Finally, there's also the yellow rim light to create a contrast area along the left side of her face. You can also bring in basic planes to bounce light off of for different results. You can easily create these in Omniverse. If we want to do something like increase the reflection on the eyeballs, then we can use an emissive material on a plane in front of the character. You can see here that I've added an emissive plane directly in front of the character and as a result, we're getting a strong reflection on the eyes. Let's take a look at adjusting the skin materials next. All of the material parameters in iClone are mapped perfectly to Omniverse, which allows you to do the same familiar adjustments in Omniverse as you would with a digital human shader in iClone. You can adjust the micro normal strength and tiling parameters to get varying surface results, as you can see here. One of the most important elements of your character's skin is the subsurface settings, which dictate how light is transmitted on your character's skin. You'll notice that without it, your character's skin will look quite dull and lifeless. You can get very different results if you change the subsurface color values as well. Notice that if I change the color to something cold like blue, it will simulate a much different skin tone as opposed to a nice warm color like red or yellow. The radius color will affect the light transmission of the deeper layers. If we increase the radius value for the red, it will give much of the skin a stronger blood-like glow. It's quite apparent here on the character's neck. Finally, you can also go into the advanced section and manually tweak individual parts to make the effect more apparent in specific areas. Let's look at eyelashes and hair adjustment. For the eyelashes, the biggest effect will come from adjusting the opacity multiplier value as you can see here, which adjusts the degree of density. This is because we're using an opacity map to control the density. If you want, you can also adjust the base color of your character's eyelashes to change the color. When it comes to hair, the density is controlled by the opacity threshold value, since we use hair pieces instead of grooming with CC3 characters. Therefore, the opacity map is quite important here in order to get a full luxurious head of hair in Omniverse. You can tweak the minor parts of your hair as well. Here there are a number of melanin presets only available in Omniverse, which you can use to blend in with the base color of your hair. If I use a black preset, you can notice that it will add more depth and variety to lighter colored hair like we're dealing with here. However, the base color map is still going to be the most effective part of adjusting your hair color. Here I have all of the separate hair elements selected, and when I adjust the diffuse weight, you can see a dramatic result. Generally, you'll want to keep this at a decent level in order to maintain the original hair color from Character Creator. In addition to the diffuse weight, there is also an index of refraction or IOR value, which affects the specular highlights on the hair. If we change the value on all of the hair elements to zero, 
The hair will suddenly turn very rough, almost like hay, with no reflection at all. Bring this up to a suitable level, unless of course you want your character to have hair made of hay. To tweak the specular highlight further, you can use the azimuthal roughness parameter. A higher value here will diffuse the specular highlight more, while a lower value will concentrate it more to a particular area. It can be a key value when trying to simulate hair shininess. Next, let's take a look at adjusting the eye values for the most realistic results. There are two eye occlusion items, and essentially what they do is dictate how moist the eyes look. By adjusting their opacity values, you can make your character have either watery eyes, or raise the opacity to give them a drier appearance. There are also two corneas that you can adjust as well. With the cornea, if you adjust the specular scale, it can increase or decrease the amount of reflection on the eyeball. A higher value here will create a more apparent reflection on the eye. Finally, there are the eye materials themselves. These are mainly used to adjust the color and brightness of the iris. You can see the effect that changing the iris brightness has right here. You can also tweak the material values for your character's teeth and tongue. If you want your teeth to appear more yellow or aged, you can reduce the teeth desaturation value. Increasing it will give your character a set of pearly whites. For that sparkly glisten, you can also adjust the front specular value to get a more apparent shine. You may also want to adjust the brightness of the tongue to make it easier to see in some cases as well, like I'm doing here. Finally, let's take a look at some very basic render settings. You can tweak the maximum subsurface scattering bounce value to get a stronger or weaker result on your subsurface scattering. For a depth of field effect, you can activate that in the post-processing panel. Here, you can tweak the distance value in order to get a very subtle yet effective result where the main area of focus is on the face itself, while the ears and back hair areas are slightly blurred. Those are a few quick tips for getting the best render for your CC3 character in Omniverse. Please be sure to check out our other Omniverse tutorials, as well as our forums at forum.reillusion.com. I'll see you in the next video. To catch such a thief proved... elementary. We only had to act as though we believed in such stories and pose as buyers. The thief then came to us.